I do not know yet how many people participated in DBN this year. I, I, I know that in 2017, about 26 million Nigerians were glued to their television, participated in BB, you know, N. No, it's not a laughing matter. The point I'm making, if we have the same number of young people taking part in the affairs of our country, the situation will be different. And that is why we must ensure that we participate actively in the affairs of our country. And Lagos in particular, the point she's making, there are 57 local governments. How many people took part in the elections? Figures were just announced because people didn't come out. So I, I think it's a lesson for all of us. I think it's a challenge. We are Malians. Yeah, I'm very happy to be on this um, podium, finally. I've been requesting for about seven years to be included in the panelists We're every year for some reason, you know. But this year, I decided to fit Agbasi. So you see that some panelists are not here. I don't think they too understand why they are not here. You know, but I know why. I made, I made it so. And I was looking at my phone waiting. And they called me, please, 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 please can you feel it? I say yes. <laughs> so this is not, as we say in Nigeria, ordinary eye. It's not ordinary. So evolution or devolution, you know, the topic is interesting. It's because the professionals of Nigeria are afraid of revolution. So let me just make my point, you know, so. Evolution for me is, uh, doesn't change the nature of a character. You know, so evolution is more about, in science really, you know, uh, the theory of evolution by Charles Darwin, Basically, in science, evolution simply means the physical adaptation of uh, a species to its environment. So the nature of that species remains the same, you know. So uh, a lion can be a bear in America, but he's still an aggressive motherfucker. Might just look different, might back, growl different, you know. But he's still a motherfucking aggressive motherfucker. So that for me is what evolution means, you know. And seriously, I think this is the goal of the Nigeria professional and both business and ruling elite is to find a way to perfect oppression. You know. To find to find a way to find a way that they oppress everybody, but we are okay with it. So they try, you know, and they give us different ways and different terminologies, you know, but it's basically the same thing, you know, over and over again. And for me, what Nigeria needs is a revolution, but not the mainstream idea of what everybody thinks a revolution should be. Because I believe that revolution is ideology in action. Not just because you are angry. Somebody was telling me, a friend of mine, they voted out a politician in their area. Good thing. I said, why? He said, because when they came to beg, when they came, they begged him for money, he did not give them. I said, so if he had given you the money, you would have voted for him again. He said, yes now. So now there has been change in that neighborhood, but there has not been a revolution meaning that the character, the nature of that neighborhood will remain the same, that certain people will still exploit certain people in that neighborhood. And this for me is the answer, is the question that Nigeria must answer, even if we devolve power. And I don't want people to act as if Nigeria has not been regional before. We are historical. This restructuring noise irritates me because we have been regional before. And under the regional government of Nigeria, there's You've not seen that kind of corruption before. You think these people are corrupt in this federal system? 
go and read the history of corruption in the regional system of Nigeria. These people will turn themselves to demagogues in their region. I mean, if you are Yoruba and you are Operation Wet here, I don't know why. It's, it's just here, yeah, just here, yeah, happen right here. Even when people praise Awolowo, that he built school. Awolo built school for you because he had the ambition of being prime minister. The free school he built will make him look good for his prime ministerial job. Finish. I studied the character of everybody. So this is what the problem is. Nigeria is a manifestation of our collective consciousness. You understand what I'm saying? Nigeria is a manifestation of our collective consciousness. It's not about evolution, devolution. If you like, devolve power to the poorest man in one neighborhood that has been suffering all his life. He will use the suffering that he has suffered all his life to justify making other people suffer. And that, for me, is the fundamental basis that African people must learn that your pain is not justification to cause somebody else pain. You know? So it is this collective consciousness, even when um, Uncle Femi came up here to talk about BBN. You know, BBN is a way to blame Nigerian youth. Oh, we are watching BBN. But who paid for it? Uncle Femi's friends. Who pays, who sponsors, on what platform is BBN? Is it the youth that own the platform? If BBN is not there, will they watch it? Don't blame us now. You don't give us library, you give us BBN. And you are complaining. We will leave it and carry gun, no? We will leave BBN. When we leave BBN now and carry gun, say your mind will come down. We are using the one you give us. Like the one way you give us, you, nightclub everywhere, hotel everywhere, you will still be complaining that we are fucking too much. We are dancing too much. Ah, why are you building the hotel everywhere and the club everywhere? Is that what, what you expect? I mean, should we let your businesses crumble? <laughs> I'm not understanding. In as, much, in, as much as, in as much as we believe that um, in as much as we believe that Nigeria Nigeria needs some kind of political I am the pro tem chairman of movement of the people and you know what that simply means it doesn't mean that I believe in the political process of Nigeria it doesn't mean that I believe in the words of our elites it doesn't even mean that I believe in democracy it means that I'm seeking any peaceful avenue to remove my people from this prison. You see, I'm not... When you organize a political party, when you organize, that word organize is what is scaring Nigerian people. You understand? They've made you afraid to organize. And that is the problem we have. Forget restructuring, forget headsmen. If I organize my area, they no bond the headsmen where. It is the lack of organization the lack of camaraderie, solidarity, because that is what the elites do. Divide us with any rich, oh, the, the rich is from the poor, the Yoruba is from Igbo, Igbo is from Hausa, the Christian is from the Muslim, the young is from the old. Any line of division that can exist in humanity is drawn here, exacerbated uh, by their media, projected as if that is the only thing happening. Even I have been a victim just weeks ago. I was blaming the media. I said, some non-entity will post, whiskey is better than fella. This person has 200 followers. He has made 10,000 posts. Nobody knows this person. Now, the media will carry this post of a non-entity, take it and put it on a platform with millions of followers as a way to insult fella, but they'll be doing as if it is just they are carrying news. Now, Millions of Nigerian youth insult Buhari every day. Have you ever seen the media go and carry the insult of one non-entity of Buhari? The only way somebody can insult Buhari and the media will report it is if Uncle Femi does it, or one senator, or maybe Brafemi, you know, or one, they can never re 
tweet the tweet of a non-entity to insult Buhari. You understand? So I made that point. And immediately, they switched it again. Shall we is jealous of whiskey. So you see, that's the Nigerian professional for you. Go inside his bank. It's the same thing he does to you. He hates you. He doesn't want to give you loan. You enter there, his face squeeze up. Because he knows that's where they are laundering all your money from. It must make you feel down and low. Every money they are counting there is your own. When Sky Bank pack, before they pack up, the government first gave them 200 billion. See, when you people say you are capitalist, I laugh. You, this poor man, running around thinking you are a capitalist. Nobody in Nigeria can be a capitalist. Even Dangote, for one reason only, we lack capital. We lack the capital. I say it everywhere. If Bill Gates wakes up with Dangote's money, he will commit suicide. Microsoft is $1.7 trillion. How much is the whole of Nigeria? The last time we did it under Iwela, she said it was $505 billion. And now they say that same economy don't shrink by 70%. So if you remove 70 from that 505, that's the number we are all of both or ten dollar That's our number. Microsoft alone, $1.7 trillion. That means, you know, Bill Gates can buy our country. He has bought it already. So don't even worry. Yeah, don't worry about that. Bill Gates is also a president of Nigeria. Uh -huh. We have plenty of presidents. Don't think Buhari is your only president. All of you will sit down here. You are blaming Buhari. He's not your only president. Nigeria has plenty of presidents. In fact, Rafemi is the president of Shrine. <laughs> Wait. He provides security, light, water, infrastructure. Ah. Still give people like me. Welfare package. <laughs> anyway, to round up, to round up, what I believe is that whether Nigeria evolves, whether there is an evolution of this power or system or a devolution of power until we go to the core of that which has been spread within us. Because, you know, Nigeria, as um, my big brother there, uh, Mr. The, the, and the gigantic daily Faro Timi said, Nigeria was stitched together, you understand? And he didn't want to really use the right words, but it was a deal between oppressors and slave traders, you know? And these slave traders are those people that believe that European things, mirror, gunpowder, gin, textile, umbrella, were more valuable than human beings. And 500 years later, their descendants are still in control. I'm telling you for a fact. All of them, from Tinubu to Meidiri Bay to El Rufai to Buhari, go and check their lineage, go and see that. Even in Uruguay, they just did, one, they did a exper uh, research like 12, 15 years ago in Uruguay and found out that 84% of the country's wealth is still owned by the 54 conquistador families that conquered those people 500 years ago. So, you understand, the white Spaniards that came, 54 families, 500 years, they are Uruguayans now, they are no longer Spanish. But them and their agents, they still control over 80% of that nation's economy. Nigeria has never done that kind of research. I wonder what we will find. How many of these families truly, because it is not about who has money, it's who you are working for, the person who get the money, who in the work for, who in the work. You link it and you find, let's see how many families truly are in control of our country. And you find at the core of it that it's still these descendants of these slave traders who still believe that the European things are worth more than African lives. But today, for, instead of uh, mirror, it's Gucci shades. You, you know? Instead of uh, uh, gunpowder, it's Rolls Royce. And all these things that they all like to use to tell you that they are you know, greater than you. Because that's all. If you look at the core of it, the only reason why any Nigerian elite is better than anybody is because they can buy some shit. They don't build nothing. They don't expand nothing. They don't innovate nothing. Dangote can charge us the best cement in the, uh, the most expensive cement in the world. Doesn't mean his cement is the best in the world. 
meaning it's not competing with the world. It's just holding us back from becoming homeowners. Do you understand? So this is the consciousness that we must change. Evolve or devolve. Thank you very much. Africa. Africa.